I was two hours into Sonority when I had a ginormous grin on my face because I had really discovered a fantastic and unique puzzle game that had me hooked and enthralled. Sonority describes itself as a magical music puzzle game, but you don't need to have previous musical experience or knowledge, you don't need to have rhythm, you don't need to button mash or button press or be in any timing with anything really whatsoever. This is all about collecting musical notes and using them to change the world around you. I'll explain. You play as this character called Esther, who is traversing these abandoned ruins in search of a mystical melody to heal her friend Batama the bear. Of course it's a bear. <laughs> and as you do this, you'll collect some mysterious musical instruments, and they change the world that's going on around you. Each puzzle will start off with like a hit point that you can stomp and it will send out a pulse around like a light, a lit up uh, track. And on these tracks are various different statues. And when you play the instrument next to the statue, it takes on the note that you are playing. So you get like a musical feedback as you go around the circuit or loop that you've created. But that changes the blocks that it's attached to. So for example, it could be that you're trying to uh, open up a door by lowering or raising a block. If you're lowering it, you might start off with a D note and then do a C note because you're going D, C, and so it will go down a step and therefore take the block down. However, if you need to say raise a platform two blocks worth, you could do C to E. If you need three, you go C to F. And the beauty of this is that you can take it on from a musical perspective, but you can easily, in the options, swap out the musical notes and just go for numerical or symbols or letters. So that if you don't understand or don't connect with that musical scale, you can just enjoy the puzzles of going up three, down three, left three, right three, or whatever it is that you're doing, and understand it in a numerical or letter uh, format. As you move through these puzzles though, they get more and more complicated and it was around the two hour mark where it really started to hit and I was like, mmm, these puzzles are juicy. And the beauty of it is that you can defeat the puzzles purely by logic and good observational skills because as you watch the patterns and the circuits get more and more complicated and it might be that you do part of a circuit change something then do another part of a circuit change it again and slowly like rotate mechanisms around so that you can progress you just have to watch where the pattern is going work out the steps and then try and like backtrack and make sure everything can all line up together the game gets more and more complicated over time because you'll start to unlock more notes so that each instrument that you pick up has eight notes to its scale. And then you'll need to start mixing and matching some of the instruments too. The instruments play really nicely. So you've got a flute, you've got a kalimba, and you've got a bandura. And each one has like a collection of notes and you can just randomly play them as you go along. The controls took a little while for me to get used to though because whilst you move around, Esther doesn't have any other interactions apart from occasionally pressing X on your controller so that you can then uh, interact with the wall around you or talk to a character. But the musical notes, and there's eight of them, are assigned to the four shoulder buttons and then uh, A and B on the Xbox 360 controller and the D-pad left and down. So it's kind of like you can like do 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 by just like meddling around on the fingers. And you can idly just play along as you move around the levels and that's quite fun. Indeed, there are treasure chests that will sing a melody to you and if you play it back, it opens up new background music. And I found myself just jauntily playing along with all the different instruments that I'd collected, swapping them out, moving them around and just having fun. There's also lots of collectibles as you move through the game as well that you can then slot into um, like story rocks and then it will give you some of the background story of what's going on around you that's separate from the murals that you can interact with and muse over and progress the story through the voice acting. There's even vocal songs in the game. So various characters will sing at you uh, and the raccoon gets his own little song halfway through, <laughs> which was quite unexpected and good fun. And so there is absolutely this musicality that runs through the game, but it doesn't need to apply to you at all. 
indeed, there's only a few key areas in the game where you need to kind of move in a time-based fashion as maybe some blocks might open and close certain pathways and you just need to walk towards it and then walk through things at a relative pace. Graphically, this game looks beautiful and it plays very nicely too as you kind of wander around the different environments. Uh, you kind of view the game from an isometric view in a 3D landscape, so you have some control over your camera movement, but it's from fixed camera perspective, so it kind of wobbles a little bit to the left and right. And I'd have liked some maybe more 3D movement to be able to manoeuvre the camera around a little bit more if I was being exceptionally picky. But what the game does do with Sonority is if you've got like a backdrop or a foreground getting in the way of where you are, it just kind of removes that foreground object so that you can see through where Esther is and you can kind of wander around from there. There were a couple of issues that I came across specifically around getting Esther into stuck positions and this is around whether you are like part way through a puzzle and then you end up putting in the wrong notes and then like you're standing on an object and it will saw you up into the sky and then you're like three blocks up and Esther won't fall off it and then you get stuck. <laughs> Now, for the most cases where this happened and I'd done something wrong, after about five seconds, the block will recede back down again as if to go, oh, Esther's stuck, and it will do it. But there was two or three occasions where actually I had to quit out the game and then restart back in again. Thankfully, this game is constantly auto-saving in the background, so it just dropped me in at the beginning of the block puzzle where I was, so I didn't really lose much time. But yeah, I'd have liked to have seen the ability to almost like hit a button and just reset the puzzle back or have the ability for Esther to just fall off of things um, where it's not going to make her fall off the world, if that makes sense. This game is superb. It's real left field. I hope that this gains an audience because it does something interesting and unique with music and puzzle games that I just haven't seen anywhere else. It's not often I can say something feels innovative. Sonority does. So, written review will be over on highplanegames.com. Don't sleep on this. I think it's a great game. And yeah, it's these types of games that I do this channel for to give, uh, hopefully, a wider audience to sleep hit games. So, yeah. Colour me happy. <laughs> Take care, everyone. Bye, bye. Higher Plane Games is part of the Higher Plane Network a completely independent media outlet supported by people like you. The goal is to create the best possible content that cultivates a richer indie scene for games as well as music and entertainment. To find out more and to get involved, visit patreon.com forward slash higherplanenetwork. Your support makes all the difference, and in return you'll gain access to bonus content and downloads. Thank you for watching.